What was really uncomfortable about it is that she was waiting for me to turn my head and then was taking pictures with that. And it was just like, it just felt, um, yeah. Look at her beautiful face. Lots of people, but just needed that human connection and just That's to be in the room. And this show is all about exploring people's choices, decisions that they make during that one shot. Right? But the hustle and bustle of it all, I just got lost and was on my own. And and as I was walking down, there was all these cameras. Put that leg out, move your leg. Put your leg out. So many. I mean, I've never seen so many cameras. There must have been a hundred, and they're just all flashing away. And I kept looking, thinking, okay, they're telling me to go back now. I've had it where there's been no audition. You greet humans and you kind of make them feel special. It's quite a rare thing, actually. And you turn up, and it's made me feel a bit emotional. Rachel Wilde, welcome to my place. Thank you, thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so happy, Miss Guest One. How does that feel? Yeah, good. A little bit nervous, because I know what you like, I don't know what you're going to say. <laughs> you know what I'm like? <laughs> All right, that's worrying. And I know how you can be. I'm not, I don't know, I around. prefer inquisitive, I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'm curious, but... What I love about this is that this gives me an opportunity to tell you something that I've never told you before. Okay. Go on then. <laughs> so, it's relating to my first impression of you the very first night we met. Okay. And I thought, oh, this would be a nice opportunity to share my thoughts. I've never done that before, have I? I've never, okay. We've never dissected our first meeting. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Better be good. <laughs> can, I, can I give context to how we met first? Yeah. That course. might be a nice place to start. So, it was the evening of Monday, the 14th of June, 2021. Yeah. And I was in my second week of London, having moved here from Sheffield. And on my list of to-dos when I moved to London was take up acting classes, because I'm just a natural creative and I'm just fascinated by so many different creative disciplines and I wanted to figure out why when I'm watching Netflix I just find myself being hooked by that performance. Yeah. What did he or she do that just hooked me in? I wanted to figure it out. So I'm going to come to acting classes. So I found out about yours. I found out about yours and I thought, I don't know who you were at the time, it was just an acting class called The Raw Stop, it was in yeah. its second week, I'll go to that. So I was running through Camden High Street late I think it was about 10 minutes past seven, it started at seven, and I was a little bit desperate, frantically looking for a pub called, called the Oxford Arms. I was looking for this place and I found it and I dashed in, I was smiling, I was happy. A guy said, stop running, put your mask on, <laughs> which I did. Ran up the stairs, ran along the corridor, saw some curtains, pulled them back, and there were these rows of benches descending towards the stage, two performers acting on the stage, and then there was someone sat at the front row, blonde, brown hair, she turned round, gave, and it was you, you turned round, you looked at me, and do you know what my first thought was? What? I thought I pulled. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the way you turned around and I thought I was pulled, you know why I thought I'd pulled? And I'm what? not proud of this, but I'm a man, right? The reason I thought I'd pulled is because you've got such a remarkable smile. Like, I've seen the way you do this. Like, you make people feel like the only human in the room when you smile at them, right? And you gave me this massive smile. Your entire face lights up when you smile at someone. And I, and I thought I'd pulled. Aww. I subsequently learned that. That's, a, that's, that's nice. That is nice. Yeah, the way you greet humans and you kind of make them feel special is quite a rare thing, actually. But I do remember that day. What do, so in the interest of reciprocation, what were your first impressions of me I, that day? I just thought, oh, who's this guy? And then you got up and you just got stuck in. And yeah, I just remember... Um, I was really pleased to see because people that were coming on them first two weeks were people I knew or people that I'd contacted and said I'm going to set up this acting space for actors to just come and, and perform. Obviously we'd, we'd just sort of been a year and a bit into lockdown um, and I just felt like especially actors, lots of people, but just needed that human connection and just to be in the room and performing again. And then all of a sudden there was this guy that I didn't know 
So I was quite, I was quite intrigued. I was like, oh, how, how have you stumbled upon this? Um, and then obviously we spoke about how you did and it was just like, I thought, oh, it was lovely. And then you sent me the most amazing email after that was, it was so lovely that made me, it really made me feel that I was doing the right thing because I'd always been so tunnel vision about being an actress that being a facilitator, not a teacher, but you know, like sort of running these workshops was not something that was ever in my dreams to do. Um, but since the moment I set it up, it's just been, it's been so good because I think like you don't turn away from little opportunities or little doors that open and this sort of came about and since then just creatively it's changed my life in so many ways. Like I've been able to um, get really comfortable with performing regularly so that when auditions do come up I'm, I feel more prepared, I don't feel rusty, I don't feel nervous. So, um, I think that's something that people might often not take into account when they're considering an actor or an actress's life. They're not, they're thinking about seeing them on whatever they're seeing them on, but they're not necessarily mindful of the spells in between where yeah. you need to maintain your activity. Yeah, right? and sometimes the, the spells in between can be a year. I mean, I've had it where there's been no auditions for a year, and then you get this part and you turn up and just feel like, oh my God, I really want this part. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, your nerves get in the way. And yeah, so for me, the Royal Stop's been amazing. And I feel like you was there from one of the first days and I just loved having you there, your, you know, your support and... Do you remember what my, do you remember? I, I joined in week two. Yes. And do you remember what my first scene was? I'd be stunned if you do. No, I don't. No, it was me and Lo. Um, Laura and we were assembling IKEA flat pack. This was the scene we were given. So Laura was trying to assemble IKEA flat pack, and I, this was an improv scene because you always begin your classes with a little bit of improv, right, to warm yeah. us up. And we just walk in and develop the scene as we wish. And, yeah. and Laura was making some flat pack, and I just walked in and I had to join. You still look slightly incredulous, like you don't remember that no, scene at all. Do you know what? As you're saying it, it rings a bell. <laughs> I do remember it, and I remember like... I'm offended. Cause you Rings said a bell. You'd, you'd, you'd said, no, I do, it, it does ring a bell. But you should be thinking <laughs> about that scene every night. No, but I do, I do remember thinking, I can't believe you've never acted before. You were so natural and, yeah. That scene was right up my street, though, because I subsequently learned six months later, because I'm still not convinced acting's for me, per se. Because, like, for me, this is me. I prefer this kind of environment. Yeah. Like, I... Forgive how corny, th this might be the most corny thing you'll hear this week, but I stand by it. I genuinely think the best character that I can be is me. And I really, I don't know if struggled the right word, but the, tr the thing with acting, like when I had to portray other human beings and certainly the heightened emotional scenes, I always struggled with, like, I'm, cause in my normal life, I'm not an emotional being, yeah. I'm very level. So when I'm having to play the scenes when my girlfriend's been shagging my mate or whatever, yeah. Like the real me, I know people always say it's not about the real you though, CK, but like the real me would be like, fine, we're obviously not right to each other and move on. But when I have to like pour out my heart, I struggle. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that you did struggle with that really. I thought that you, um, I don't I could see that you could imagine being in that scenario and mm. how you would perform as you, CK, in that scenario. Mm. Interesting. But you mentioned a moment ago, Rach, that I sent you an email when I got on that night, didn't I? Because yeah, you did. And I really, this is something I, I feel is quite, I'd be remiss to not mention this because I've never been to any other kind of, any other acting class, but when, I, when people were coming every week and they experienced the raw stop, something people said often was, I just can't believe how inclusive, encouraging and supportive this group is because that's not always the case. They can often be quite cliquey acting groups or there can be groups which are a little bit for want of a better word hostile towards new people coming in or almost competitive I suppose is a better word the raw stop was always just super inclusive super supportive and I just felt that and I just kind of I've got my email I sent you you want to read it go on then because <laughs> and 
this isn't exclusive to me, actually. I feel, I feel like everyone that came after me said similar things. So you can read, you can read what I wrote. If you get bored halfway through, then don't bother. Hi, Beau. <laughs> <laughs> a, bit for, a bit familiar. <laughs> I'd struggle to adequately explain how energising and fulfilled last night made me feel. To be honest, at the risk of sounding like a soppy knobhead after we all parted, it felt like I floated home. Aside from the creative outlet, I loved the open communication between everyone. The constructive feedback and guidance notes I received after each scene were illuminating. Every one of the notes made total sense and inspired me to reflect on how I delivered lines, moved my body, expressed myself facially, etc. I don't know what your goals are for this workshop, but if among them is to make people feel inspired, connected and enriched, I assure you, mission accomplished. Thank you for putting your neck out and creating this powerful space. I look forward to helping you make sure everyone knows it. Enjoy your week. I'm listening to that, I'm like, it's so mind your neck in, mate. <laughs> it's so nice. It's so nice. It was so encouraging for me to, to hear that. And, and I did receive other messages that were similar and it was like, it was so nice that people felt like that because I really wanted it to be inclusive and I really wanted to be people to feel like, they felt a part of it, even though they was new. And part of the Royal Stop, it was a very social thing as well. Like we all sort of, it became like a little family very quickly, which was lovely. Mm. But then the hard thing for a new person coming into this sort of like family set up. Um, and I know because I've been to similar workshops where, you know, the, the initial people are all established and you're just sort of outside trying to get in and nobody's really interested in talking to the new person or um and f and for me i really didn't want that to be the case and and i think that with the initial people the family of us that were the people that kind of got it moving and made the raw stop what it is I think everyone was on board with that. So whenever new people turned up, they was always welcomed with open arms, not just by me. Mm. But sorry, I feel like I'm shaking. It's bloody freezing in here. It is. I mean, to be <laughs> fair, it is. A, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. They said they put the heaters on. I'm not convinced. <laughs> and then it was so nice. It was such a warm atmosphere. Everyone was cuddling each other. No, but everyone, you know, like everyone that was part of the raw stop just made new people and I just felt like oh I love you guys so much you're all just being and are the people that I wanted to be part of mm. the group so I'm really interested in comparing the raw stop to your experience of an acting school because that was really pivotal to your development as an actress your acting school which you went to the poor it the was poor called school. the poor school which we'll talk about in a minute because that had such a legacy behind it before it closed in 2018 yeah. but let's share your reply to me right because i because i'll just go through it briefly so you oh re now this makes me cringe what did i say you went who are you you fucking perv <laughs> <laughs> no i know i didn't say that <laughs> oh, I said no. that. <laughs> you went oh oh ck this email just brought tears to my eyes did it though yeah it really did i, I felt like um yeah, I did. And I feel it now when I think about it. I just, yeah, it, it just was the encouraging words that I needed to keep going with it. You're such a beautiful soul. Thank you so much for taking the time to write this and articulating it so beautifully. We all loved having you there with us last night. I'm so happy that you felt all those positive feelings after coming and joining us. That's made me feel so happy, I can't tell you. Thanks so much for your openness and kindness. Have a wonderful week, darling, and look forward to seeing you. But I just wanted to share that because the six months when I was going solidly, I had to just recently take a time out to produce all this. Yeah. But during the six months when I was coming solidly, like my feelings, I saw it in others. I would say, out of everyone that's come to the group over the last six months, who, whose heart just, I recognised me and him when he came on his first day and it was Reese. Like when Reese came for the first day, he was like, 
what is this? Because Reese has been acting for many, many years. And he was like, what is this space? This is just blowing my mind. It was just, he felt so energized, so, ful yeah. so fulfilled. And he was like, and I remember that's why I kind of just wanted to really bring him in because I recognize exactly how he felt. There is one question I wanted to ask though, and this is interesting because as you and I become mates and we hang out and we out, and you, where, do you, where, where do you always take us? Rio? Rio. Rio, Cafe Rio. Cafe it's Rio. the best in Fitzrovia. It's the best. You and your vegetarian breakfast. <laughs> During our many chats, there's certain things you say to me sometimes that either break my heart, make me laugh, or think, what do you mean? And one thing you said that semi-broke my heart once, you said, all my life, CK, I dreamt of my first ever red carpet. All I've been dreaming about for years was my first ever red carpet, and I thought it was going to be everything I wanted it to be. And it turns out, it was horrible. Uh, and I hated that because we've all got our dreams. We've all yeah. got our dreams and we always sometimes paint our dreams with vivid colours and broad brush strokes, but it's always a beautiful image. And for that to end up being something that is just soul destroying isn't actually too much of a stretch when you told me how that evening made you feel at the NTAs. Yeah. But before we get onto the NTAs, but one, so I realised very late that you were in EastEnders for a number of years. Like, like it's not like someone comes to your class and goes, hi, I'm Rach. You might have seen me on EastEnders. No, no one remembers me <laughs> so long ago. <laughs> so, so, but I didn't realise till many, many weeks down the line and it's, it, it's, what's really interesting is that you said to me, like, the difficulty of when you're on a high-profile TV show like EastEnders is just little things. And I, I remember one story you told me about going to the GP surgery and someone's yeah. like, you could see, do you want to tell the story? Because I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I walked into the, to the doctors and, um, and there was a couple that walked in and I saw the woman sort of, look and take and you can tell and at the time it was like I, I think I don't know if I'd just come out of EastEnders or I was in it at the time but you see that she'd noticed so I just you know wanted to sort of be warm and so I looked and, and smiled and then she got her phone out and was sort of holding it like that and I just I don't know, I just wanted to, her to feel like I was approachable if she wanted a picture. Um, but what was really uncomfortable about it is that she was waiting for me to turn my head and then was taking pictures with... Uh, and it was just like... It just felt... Um, yeah, just it wasn't very nice. Intrusive? Thing. Yeah, intrusive and... Sneaky, um, yeah, I don't know. I love it when you get cross. Not for me. It was only one little kiss we had, wasn't it? It was more than that, and you know it. I love Carol. Listen, I understand that you're childhood sweethearts, but let's be honest, she is punching above her wife. Hey, hey, there hey. you are, the fleshy car dealer, and there she is, trudging down Bridge Street with her freezer shop. Yeah, and I love her. She's a damn good woman. So is my mum. It doesn't mean that I want to spend the rest of my life with her. You ain't got the first idea. Hey. What she's put up with all this year. I'm telling you, that woman has got more guts and more determination than you or I put together. You see? I said me and you were cut from the same cloth. You're missing the point. Oh, come on, David. We both know what you really want. And what's that? Stay away from me and stay away from my family. Do you understand? Because the reason I bring that up, and that was actually a common thread with you, because you've been like a performer, whether it's even in your bedroom, whether it's in the living room with the family, whether it's on days out with the family, like you've always been a performer, so you're always singing and dancing. Yeah. And you were saying that when you're on a high profile TV show, you feel that's almost suppressed because you're conscious of eyes on you. So normally when you're not on EastEnders, you'd be like, I've seen you on a night out. Yeah. <laughs> you can't shut you up. So you're yeah. always singing and dancing, but you felt like when you're on a high-profile show, like that part of you was suppressed to a degree. Yeah, for a while, actually. Like, I've always loved karaoke. I've always loved it. And I've always, bef you know, before I became an actor, um, 
I'd always get up, have a, my song was Big Spender, and I'd perform it like I was in a show. Um, not that my voice was great, but the performance was like I was on stage performing. And, and all of a sudden, you know, like when I was in EastEnders, that kind of stopped because I'd be at a bar where there was karaoke and I'd be too scared to get up because, mm. you know, especially with the way things are now with camera phones and social media and all that sort of stuff, you just, it's hard to just be yourself, your authentic self and like, so here's yeah. the reason, I'm, I'm so glad what you just mentioned about being conscious of cameras, being conscious of social media, because that brings me beautifully. And I'm glad one of us has wound my neck and brought me back to my point. Because I remember, if you remember the very first night we met after the session, yeah. as we always did, me, you, Steve, Laura, Letitia, we all went and hung out in the bar downstairs. And then I did what I became my signature piece, didn't I? I whipped out my phone, because I'm always documenting my journeys, my yeah. days, my life, my adventures. I'm always documenting stuff. Yeah. So here's a question I've never asked you, and I demand honesty. Did you think, when I whipped out the phone, because I don't even ask permission, I just shove it in people's face and I start yeah, asking I them stuff. Did you think, what's this guy up to? Who is yeah, it? it made me feel really uncomfortable. We've never um, discussed this before, have we? No, no, no. Um, it can't like, I don't know, it just, it's almost like a snow, I feel like. I'm really shaking. So. Are you reliving that night um, No, but I'm just not reliving that night, but the moments when, because it's not the only time, you know, you are a, a documentary maker and you do this stuff. It's part of you. But it took a while for me to sort of, I don't know, um, yeah, I just felt like exposed all the time and just wanted to sort of hide away. Um, and you know my personality, I'm not someone that hides away. I'm, I'm quite a big personality, but on camera, it's just different. Like when I see someone with their phones out, I just feel like, yeah, a bit. Because what I find amazing about that, and the penny only dropped, we've known each other now for like seven to eight months. Yeah. And it's only, probably in the last two months that I've replayed that first night, armed with all the information about your character and personality that you've kindly shared about how you were always aware of cameras and people trying to surreptitiously and sneakily film you. It's only now that I've realised, oh, because that first night we met, I just whipped my phone out, shoved it in your face. Bearing in mind, I didn't know, I didn't know your history as an actress. I didn't even know you'd been in standards necessarily. I didn't know that at all. Or the bad experiences you've had. So I was playing it back thinking, oh, that must have been so awkward and uncomfortable for her. But what I find interesting is that you never even texted me or anything, said, like, oh, well, you're, why were you filming me? <laughs> like, that, no, which is I really didn't, interesting. Because I think it's because I know that that is my, that's my problem. It's my paranoia, it's my stuff. And, um, and I just loved your enthusiasm and the person that you was coming into the Royal Stop. So I didn't want to start sort of, you know, sort of trying to dampen your enthusiasm, which was to. I find that, I don't know, maybe I'm too cynical, but I do find that remarkable that there wasn't even a sneaky text like, can I just ask you what you're doing with that video? You've never once asked me what you're going to do with that video or, any, or anything I ever take, but maybe I'm just a trustworthy, trustworthy character. Yeah, and I think... <laughs> there was a bit of an awkward pause. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I think you, I think, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know sure. whether you was trustworthy or not at that point. I didn't. And there's one more little challenge I've got for you. Go on then. So my biggest anxiety since that shot was this could just be a portrait of someone's right ear. So, please no. We're sort of worse dressed, trashed for looking disgusted. I think Jeremy Clarkson said I looked like I was wearing a dressing gown. Okay, go. You know, I alluded to it a minute ago, and this is another thing, so I want to touch on, because this is, I find it really fascinating, and I think it's a sign of the time, so I referenced the NTA's red carpet a moment ago. Yeah. Elaborate, Rachel Wilde. Yeah, no, you are you're absolutely right. I, um, it had been something, you know, like it wasn't my dream, my dream was to be an actor, but part of that you kind of sort of imagine yourself going to these events, even as a, a young child, 
Um, Because I I grew up watching sort of like the big MGM movies and all the glamour and all that sort of stuff. So I was really excited about it. And when EastEnders said that I could go to this thing or that I would be going to this thing. That's the National Television Awards. National Television Awards. I was really excited. I thought, oh my God, what am I going to wear? And I went out and spent an absolute fortune on this dress and in my mind I was thinking like when I went in the shop it was a vintage shop and the woman said that's an Aussie Clark classic and I was like oh Aussie Clark what's an Aussie Clark classic but it sounded good enough for oh, I'm okay, from Canning Town like, who's Aussie Clark <laughs> exactly <laughs> and I was like okay this is this is exciting and I put the dress on and you know none of the pictures showed but it had this beautiful sort of cut out big triangle cut out on the back and um, I, it, I just felt really elegant and lovely when I put it on and I was rushing around like the, the day before picking, I had to pick up the dress and um, my shoes and, and then I obviously I had my underwear and what I did was I ran in a shop and grabbed some underwear um, knickers that were the same colour as the, that looked exactly the same colour as the dress and I was like perfect just in case there's any because there was a big split up the middle just in case then it could maybe camouflage this is what I was thinking in my mind so that was that and then my friend um, she come and done my hair and makeup for me and you know I spent hours getting ready and then before we went to the event all the people from EastEnders m- met up and I was in the toilet with some of the girls that were in EastEnders, um, Maddie Hill, and there was one of the other girls, I think she was playing Lucy Bill. Anyway, there was a couple of the girls, and I was like, when I walk, can you see anything? And they was like, no, you can't. And the dress was quite heavy, so it was so kind you were of... So con- you were conscious of the slit at the front? I was conscious of the slit, but at the same time, the dress was a really heavy material. So even though you walked... The idea is that you get a glimpse of the leg coming through, but it's just very subtle because the material was quite heavy. Um, And then, obviously, I went onto the red carpet. As soon as I got there, I was supposed to be walking down with the guy that was um, Terry Alderton, who was my on-screen ex-husband. And we was going to be walking to get down together so that I had people to walk down with. But the hustle and bustle of it all, I just got lost and was on my own. And as I was walking down, there was all these cameras, um, so many. I mean, I've never seen so many cameras. There must have been a hundred and they're just all flashing away and they're all shouting things at you. And they was like, walk back, go back, put that leg out, move your leg, put your leg out so we can see the split in the dress, do this, do that. And I'm like, okay. And I could see the door there, where, which was the end to where I needed to get through. And I kept looking, thinking, okay, they're telling me to go back. What, what, so I should go back, okay. And it was like, I didn't really know what I was supposed to be doing. I didn't want to say, no, sod you's, I'm, that's where I've got to go, get to and I'll go there. I, I was just sort of doing what I was being told. Um, and, yeah, and then when it... The, when I got into the NTAs, um, Jessie Wallace was there with her boyfriend. She was like, are you all right? And I was like, oh, my God, that was so horrible. And she said, um, "She said, yeah, I know. And one of, one of the cameramen, actually, when those flashing, one of the cameramen said to me, be careful of him, he's Daily Mail. Or he's Daily Mail? Th- w- yeah, what's, right. the, what's the paper that, like, trashes everyone? Star? No, it wasn't Star. Okay. I think it might have been Daily Mail. I'm not sure. I don't know. I can't remember. But he kind of said, watch out for him. And the guy had sort of come down at an angle. So, yeah. And then, obviously, I just could not believe it. I got a phone call in the morning telling me that I was sort of worse dressed, trashed for 
looking disgusted. I think Jeremy Clarkson said I looked like I was wearing a dressing gown. I was thinking, Jeremy, it's an Aussie Clark. So <laughs> ju 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 just to clarify, ultimately what happened is that there were shots with when your when, when your underwear was visible. So what, where the underwear was visible. Where the underwear was very clearly yeah. visible. And what ultimately happened in the next day's newspapers is you, you topped the worst dressed list yeah, at the like, NTAs 2000. Yeah. 15? I can't remember. 2000 and something. 14, I think. 2014, worst dress. There's a picture of you in this beautiful dress. But what I always find really interesting was I first heard that story and then you, and then you showed me, you showed us the pictures with this slit and, and you could see your underwear. I was like, I'm, what's the, because like, there was a big deal. No, it wasn't a big deal. Everything's relative, but there, there were whole trash, as you were saying, all this business. Like, I'm sure, Liz, I'm sure Elizabeth Hurley kind of wore a dress like that on purpose about 10 years ago. Remember the... What Liz Hurley's Liz season? Hurley. Well, be that as, be, it doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, point taken, but it's neither here nor there who's where it's like, it's, it's, it's no. cold. No, and to like, be honest with you, I was surprised. That, I mean, at the time, I'd only been in EastEnders a couple of months and probably a handful of episodes. I was quite surprised that anyone was that interested in taking pictures of me anyway. But in hindsight, I would have spent a fiver on the dress and a thousand pound on the knickers <laughs> rather than the other way round. Mm. If I'd have known that they'd have been splashed. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. So I don't know if you necessarily... And, oh, actually, no, there was something as well. I think on one of the... Um, I think it might have been on Lorraine Kelly. Um, she'd said something along the line as, why would somebody do that? And she'd done it on purpose, and I just thought... Why would somebody what? make the wardrobe decision you made? Yeah. Right, okay, okay. But it's hard to know. I mean, I, I know that um, there was another a girl there as well who had an Aussie Clark dress on because she was in their f part of the worst dress. It was a faux... What they call it? Faux pas? Yeah. Um, and she had this black Aussie Clark dress on. And I know the material is extremely heavy. They're, it's really good quality dresses, but it showed her breasts through it. And, and that's to do with so certain cameras know that they pick up stuff like that. Mm. Whereas as you're the person wearing the dress in the shop when you're trying it on, you don't see any of these stuff. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't know that these angles can, you know, you can put a camera in a certain angle to show up. Sure. So, yeah. Well, I just wanted to touch briefly, just to close up with, just doffing our cap to the poor school, which was the school that, which was the acting school that you enlisted in at 31, actually. Yeah. Um, because I think you've said to me in the past that acting was never something that was around me as a kid, so it just seemed impossible. But thanks to a conversation you had with your husband at the time, who was a taxi driver, said like, what do you want to do with your life, Rachel? And you were like, I want to be an actress. And he said, well, why don't you do that then? And you were like, well, because I can't, uh, how? How do I have the financial means to do that? And he was like, have you heard of the poor school? I drive past it every day. So, so I'd, when I met John, we'd, Your li we was literally on our second day. And right. he said to me, what, what are your dreams? What would you like to do? And I said, oh, I've always wanted to be an actress. Anyone that knows me knew that that's what I wanted. It's been what I've been visualising and wanting since I was... A young girl and I'd visualised as a teenager being in EastEnders mm. um, which was amazing that actually it was my first acting job when I came out of the poor school but the poor school for me was life-changing I went there and turned up at this place and it was like I found my people mm. this like I felt like this is where I belong. Um, Haven't you described it as cold, grubby? It just stripped you down to the core as an actress because of the, it was wet, damp, cold, grubby. It was the environment was. Yes. The people weren't. Because just to specify, the poor school was for people who financially couldn't necessarily go to the known elite. No, schools, it wasn't right? that. It was for people like that. It was for anyone. Sure. Um, anyone that wanted to be an actor could go there if if they was allowed in, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you, I mean, you had to audition to get in there, but it, the reason why it was, like someone like me was able to go because I didn't have to give up my day job, yeah. so I could still work. Because the classes were evenings and weekends? Yeah, evenings and weekends, I got a career development loan. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah. And you were there for two years. I was there for two years. Two years, and it closed in 2018 after like almost 34 years of. Yeah, it's the most service. incredible teachers. Like they're just amazing, and it's really known in the industry. Actually, people really know the difference from people that have been to the poor school sure. to in like to other acting schools because. You've got to be a soldier to get through it. You have to be, sure. because it's very, it's a really difficult training. Um, the guy that run it could be quite abusive, and yeah. But the uh, the teachers there, uh, and even him. I mean, he's very clever man. He knows his stuff. Paul Keister. Yeah, Paul Keister. Well, tell us finally, Rach, very briefly about your fourth the, the film that you've been doing weapons training for this week? We I don't know if it's weapons training. That's what you said in the text? Combat training and I was having For to like... Playing about with knives? Yeah, I had this sort of like fake knife and I was sort of doing right. flips with that, practicing flips and then throwing it into the other hand and throwing okay. it up in the air. But um, yeah, I got this incredible part, incredible role in this feature film. I'm so excited about it. I've been filming this week and I still feel like I'm just buzzing. My feet haven't actually touched the ground <coughs> since. I just feel like, oh my God, that was just the most amazing thing. Um, just performing against this incredible actor who, um, yeah, he was lovely. I was crushing on him a bit. Um, you have a crush on him? No, <laughs> I was a bit, because the characters, oh, yeah. Leave it there, because you probably can't say too much about it anyway, I suspect at this point, can you? Yeah. No, fair enough. Well, do you like chocolate? Yeah, I do. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, Rach, I'm going to give you those. Not all of them. Don't get excited. Yeah, all I was right. going to say. Because what I'm going to do now, we're going to close with a feature of the show called Three of Me. I'm going to ask you to finish three sentences, and hopefully this will give us more insight into you as a human being. Okay. All right, and these questions are curated by the people from Frankly Delicious who make gorgeous, indulgent, sustainable mm. bean-to-bar chocolate. Yeah, they're called Frankly Delicious and we want your answers to these questions to be deliciously frank, all right? Okay. So you need to be super honest in your answers to these. So finish this sentence. <laughs> if the world ended tomorrow, at least I can say I Pick one of those chocolates to eat. Okay, um, at least I can say I kept my side of the street clean. No, you have to taste it. I want to, I have I want to taste to, it. Yeah, open okay. it. What does that mean, I kept my side of the street clean? Which chocolate is that? Okay. What's it called? So, what I mean by kept my side of the street clean is you. Um, people go through life not saying the things that they want to say, and sometimes it's too late. People that I love know that I love them, even if they don't love me back. Um, I'm not afraid to put myself in vulnerable situations. Fair enough. To... Yeah. Which chocolate have you selected? What's it called? What's in the box? Uh, it says in the box. White box. chocolate. Coffee, white, white chocolate. Coffee, white chocolate. Give me a piece Oh, of bugger. I didn't mean to say that. I'm not a coffee drinker. <laughs> Second question, Rachel. Okay. Finish this sentence. But I'm not perfect. Every day, I'm working on... And this should be a question about how you're improving yourself as a human, not necessarily professionally. Okay. So um, I'm not perfect. Every day I'm working on... I think every day I have to work on being kind to myself. Um, I feel like my... Journey, and I know this. Uh, this concern, it can sound a bit. I don't know what the word is. A bit wanky sometimes when people say this, but um, I've spent a lot, lot of years not being kind to myself and loving myself, and trying to get other people to love me. But loving yourself is the key. So that's what I work on. Good Hard. Lord. Good answer. I can move him. They're legit. Blimey. Yeah, That's really good chocolate. I agree. 
cocoa, that's really nice. Very high cocoa content. Final question. Mm. Yummy, yummer. <laughs> that is really good. Okay. My life so far, my one shot at life so far is best described using the word colourful. And when I say colourful, I mean, there's been some very lows, and there's been some very highs, and there's been some really out there amazing stuff, and really out there not amazing stuff. I would say colourful I'll is a good colourful. word to describe my life. I'll take colourful. Thank you for being so deliciously frank. And there's one more little challenge I've got for you. Go on then. We've kind of spoken for the last 40 minutes and this show is all about exploring people's choices, decisions that they make during their one shot life. Are you ready to take your second one shot? What I'd like to do, and this is a challenge I'm willing to open to you, Jesse's going to bring my camera over in a minute, right? I have 60 seconds to take, I'm going to be shoving a camera in your face again. I have 60 seconds to take one photograph of you, but I can literally only press the shutter button once. Once I've pressed it, the camera's going to be taken away from Jess, by Jess, from me. Neither one of us get to see the photograph. Okay. And that photograph is going to be transferred digitally to celebrity portrait painter, Jamie Wilkinson, who's going to craft a new portrait based on your face and that image. And then we'll bring you back here in a week. We'll unveil the painting. I'll ask you whether you love it or leave it. If you love it, it's yours to take home. Wow. If you leave it, then it'll get binned. Okay. Or it'll go on eBay. I don't know. <laughs> but I'll ask you in a week. Love it I'll or have leave to buy it. it to make sure someone <laughs> does. Basically. Are you, up for, are, you up, are you up for a second one shot? Yeah. Let's do, let's, let's do that then. So Jesse's going to literally count me down 60 seconds because... In your head, what would you like this image to be? Would you like this to be a happy photo? Would you like this to be chill? Would you like it to be cool? Would you like it to be glam? Oh, um, natural. I just, I natural. don't, I'm not a fan of sort of, <laughs> I think whenever I've got, no, the camera's on me and I've got to look at the camera, I'm like, and I do this big cheesy grin that just, yeah. So I'm just, nervous as shit. Just because something that's just, I don't know, off guard. I, Man, I, I can't tell you how nervous I am because I can't. Which I can means only I press, might not own that. I can only press this once, Rachel. Wow. And if the exposure is terrible, Do then worse. Jamie's going to have his heart cut out. So Do I Jess, have to look at the camera? You don't, I don't know. So Jess is going to count me down from. Jess is going to give me a sixty-second count. Okay. Are you ready, ready. Jess? Ready. Oh Jesus Christ! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> What do you reckon? Not looking at me. What's going to work for you, do you reckon? Not I don't looking. know. Oh. I liked when you were looking over there at Jess. That worked, but now you're looking to... Oh, that's so long. That. 45 seconds. Oh, that's cold. That. No, what you did a minute ago. No. That, that, no, that looks really nice. I can't... Yes. No. Similar. Similar. I think your mouth is too serious. I can only press the button once. Oh, I almost took it. I don't know. No. I don't like when you're smiling, Rach. Okay. Can you know what? Don't move your body. Jess, how long? Jess, how long? How long? 22 yeah. seconds, CK. Right, that's nice. Right, don't move, Rach. Hold that. Your hair's looking mint. 15. 15? Yeah. Rach, open your mouth a little bit. Looking at Rach. Yeah, that's it. Eight. Oh my god. Oh, you did. Oh, it's horrible. This that's so horrible. Oh my. <laughs> I've never. <laughs> It's all right. I've See it. I never. The only person that knows what this camera looks, what this image looks like, is basically Jess and my DOP, who can now see it. But that. Oh my God! This is hot. I'm. I'm not sure how I feel about this. But we're going to bring you back in seven days. We're going to do the unveiling of it, and it's either going to be love it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Thank you so much. Thank you, darling. Thank you so much. This chocolate. Are by we the way. done? We're done. Can I go away now? <laughs> I'm absolutely bursting. I'm going to keep that in the edit. Can I, Can I go for a wee now? <laughs> Can I take this off? Maybe in a bit. <laughs> I, I don't want you hearing me.
Hi CK, I really like the image of Rachel and how she is looking away from the camera with her slight smile. Okay, so my memory of Rachel was she turned away from me and I think she started laughing. So my biggest anxiety since that shot was this could just be a portrait of someone's right ear. So, please no. Okay. All right, go. <laughs> Look at all the face. There is sufficient face. Look at her beautiful face. He's... I'm staggered by that mouth. That is Rachel's mouth. She has this upturn in her mouth, and that is it. That Rachel's eyes and that hair. Oh, wow. Honestly, I'm... <laughs> I'm staggered by that. Rach, for me, it's your mouth. That is your mouth. That is your smile. Those are your eyes. I can't remember at all what my thoughts were when the picture was being taken. Um, probably self-conscious. Yeah, I hope it's maybe just captured whatever I was feeling at that time, I suppose. Yeah. And not the self-consciousness, obviously. Okay, go. Oh. Oh. This made me feel a bit emotional. Which is weird. Um, I think at the time, um, I think personally I was quite sad. <laughs> um, so yeah, just looking at that, it's like, oh. Um, it's a really good painting. <laughs> Hi CK. Wow. Um, thank you. It's been such an amazing thing to be part of this project and um and the painting I was just like just really blown away by it. I wasn't not expecting that at all. I certainly wasn't expecting me to be affected the way I was by seeing it. Um you know I've I've, I've painted faces before but I've never had anyone paint mine so to kind of see it in front of you and I feel like I really connected with it emotionally because in the last sort of couple of months that's passed, I feel very different to what I did when that painting, you know, when that shot was taken, that one shot. Um, so, yeah, thank you. And I don't know what I'll do with it. I'll probably, um, I think I just need to absorb it for a little bit. Like, it's, it's quite a big deal having someone paint you, really. So I think I just need to just take a moment to absorb what is there and then I don't know I don't know if I'll put it on my wall I don't I can't see that happening but maybe I don't know maybe I'll give it to my mum I don't know I just need to absorb it a bit <laughs>